All right, so let's um, focus a little bit more now on MRI. So here we have, again, the three different uh, projections, axial, sagittal, and coronal. And MRIs, as you know, are, are much more detailed than CAT scans. They avoid radiation, but they usually are a little bit harder, to, not as accessible to get, and take a little bit longer. So we'll show how some uh, how these can be very useful. Okay, so MRIs can be obtained under different settings with the magnet, and this yields different sequences. So some of the main sequences for anatomic MRI, T1, T2, and T2 flare. So on the left here is a T1. I like to think of a T1 as the most anatomical um, sequence. So on a T1, the white matter is white, the gray matter is gray, and uh, the ventricles, the fluid, is black. All right, so kind of your normal, what you normally think. T2, everything is flipped. And T2, you know, the fluid is, is bright, the white matter is dark, the gray matter is a little bit lighter. T2, I think, is, is very good for showing pathology. So if you're just starting out and you're doing clinic, you know, on your sub eye with the chairman and he says, hey, show me, you know, this patient scan, probably better to pull up the T2 first because that may show you more clearly any kind of pathology. A T2 flare is pretty much the same as a T2. It's just that the, um, the signal for the, the fluid spaces are inverted, meaning that here CSF is dark. This is nice for conditions like multiple sclerosis where you may have lesions that are bright on T2, and you just want to really contrast the lesions around the ventricle a little bit better than if the ventricle were bright already. So flares are another good one for picking up pathology. So in addition, uh, T2 and T2 flare is good at picking up water. And here we see edema, which is just kind of swelling and water in the brain that's caused by this, this sizable tumor that you see here. So this is called vasogenic edema, meaning the tumor, the blood vessels are not normal and they're leaking out some fluid and you can pick that swelling up with MRI. You can pick it up um, a little bit more faintly on, on head CT as well. Um, another sequence that you'll use commonly is called uh, diffusion restriction. It's usually labeled as B1000. So diffusion restriction is very good for looking at strokes within the brain, and really any pathology where um, the lesion is very dense. So some high-grade tumors, things like medulloblastoma, these tumor cells are really packed in together, and these will appear bright on diffusion restriction. In addition, infection also appears bright on diffusion restriction. Now, it's, it's important to check the converse of diffusion restriction, which is the ADC. So usually a lesion that's bright on diffusion restriction will be dark on ADC. If it's bright on both, that suggests something called T2 shine through, where you just have a very bright lesion and it's giving you a false, um, a false signal in terms of diffusion. Okay, so um, another important imaging uh, kind of feature for MRI is contrast enhancement. So during the MRI, the patient will be given a, a bolus usually of gadolinium. It's um, a contrast agent that's used to basically highlight lesions that have breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. So you can see here on the left, this is a pre-contrast image. This is post-contrast, and you can see this it looks like an aggressive lesion that's, that's lighting up on the contrast. A kind of useful way to determine whether or not a scan has contrast, for me at least, is two things. One is the large veins will light up. So this in the back here is the sagittal sinus. You can see that's very bright compared to the pre-contrast scan. The second thing is the nasal mucosa. You see that this is lighting up on the post-contrast compared to pre-contrast. So, you know, sometimes studies get mislabeled, but if you look at the veins and the nose, you'll be able to figure out if it's contrast or not. And clearly, if the pathology lights up, that's, um, that's obviously very helpful as well. So uh, this is just a, a follow-up on that patient. You can see that this tumor was resected through a right temporal approach. It turned out that it was a, uh, a high-grade glial tumor, meaning a, a tumor that arises from glial cells within, which, within the brain, which are cells that support the nerve cells. I put this up because this was kind of my way of showing, um, you know, during your junior year, when you want to convey post-op films to someone, you want to show the pre-contrast scan, the post-contrast scan, and usually a diffusion weighted image. So you show, uh, the reason, you know, post-contrast, many tumors, you want to make sure that you remove all of the contrast enhancing portion if that's possible. 
sometimes you'll see contrast here and you're not sure if that's tumor or just some post-op changes. So if you look, for instance, on the pre-contrast, you see parts lighting up here. You see the same parts pretty much lighting up in the post-contrast. That suggests to me that this is, you know, just more scar tissue, not actual tumor tissue because it was lighting up on the pre-contrast scan. Now, if there was a large nugget of, um, of contrast here, and I did not see it on the pre-contrast, that would make me think there's a large piece of nodular residual enhancing disease left. And of course, you want to check diffusion weighted imaging to make sure there's no large strokes that occurred from your resection if you sacrifice a blood vessel, for instance. So just from a more practical standpoint, these are the, the sequences you'd want to look at after surgery. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.